Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking INFJs versus INFPs. How do I tell the difference? How do I know if I'm an INFJ or an INFP? And you probably already Googled this. You read up online on articles, you've taken the tests, you took the INFJ versus the INFP test, and you got 50% on both. You read through the article and you thought, I, I relate to both of these statements. I can't tell the difference. I, I feel like I'm both of an INFJ and an INFP. You've gone through all of these processes and it's still difficult. It's still difficult for you to tell the difference between INFJs and INFPs when you meet them out on the streets. How do you know who are you dealing with? How do you type these two types? So I've developed 15 dichotomies to walk you through the INFJ and the INFP personality type and to help you tell the difference. Hopefully this video will fix what you've been confused about for a very, very long time. So, okay. First of all, INFJs are the archetypes of creators. They are the ones that try to make and change and shape reality in their image. They have an ideal, something that they care about greatly that they are trying to implement in society. INFJs come from one's personal inner ideas and images about society and about the world and what it could be one's personal dreams for the world, for humanity, for the tribe, for society, and then tries to make or shape or build something from start to finish, from point A to point B to point C, all the way to the end. The INFJ is trying to bring about an idea that has come purely from within. They are pulling it out part by part. It's one coherent thread, one coherent system, one coherent idea. It's all about that idea. The INFP, however, is the archetype of the catalyst or the change maker or of the editor. The INFP comes from the perspective of trying to take one's personal sense of taste and one's personal values and one's personal dreams and to see how you can implement that in every situation you are in, in your personal room, in school, in work, in what you do in your friendships, in your relationships, how can I take my values and make sure that my life and my actions and my decisions are aligned with my values? What am I do doing in every moment? And how could I do it better? How can I make sure that I live and live authentically and ethically in tune with what I care about and what I think is right and wrong? The introverted perceiver comes from one's personal taste one's personal feelings and reactions and response to what people tell you, what people want from you, what people expect from you. The introverted perceiving type comes from the perspective of who am I, what do I want, what do I feel right in this moment. So they are the taste testers, they are the beta testers, the fixers, they have opinions, they have values about everything and everyone. They care about how people live, what people do, how they do it, uh, based on their personal dreams, personal values, and personal opinions. The INFJ is the creative developer and the INFP is the creative editor. So what you see is the INFP has often unique and new and original values and op original opinions and an original sense of taste. While the INFJ has often original ideas and projects and more entrepreneurial responsibilities. The INFP is a phlegmatic, the INFJ is a melancholic. The INFJ comes from the perspective of melancholy, of holding on to an emotion for a long time. You know, having one emotion or having one feeling about something that has been driven you forward the whole life, you know having something that you've had and held on to from your childhood that you've been holding on to and carrying on your back for a long time. The melancholic has this sensation of holding something on their back to carry for the world or for themselves. The introverted perceiving type has that sensation of trying to juggle and deal with and adapt to one's feelings in the situation, to have strong feelings in every moment, to have sensations about what one wants and what one does not want, 
and to have to adjust to that and make sure that you stay in tune with that, to stay clear of that, to deal with that every day, to have to deal with your own emotions and process through. What am I feeling today? Why do I feel that way? How can I get through that? What can I do differently in this moment? Is there anything I can say or do to make things better? The INFJ is the relaxed judging type. The INFP is the relaxed perceiving type. The person, the INFJ is the person that comes from the perspective of relaxed focus. Relaxed focused gaze, relaxed focused views, relaxed focused pr pr projects, problem solving work. The INFJ is the person that comes from the perspective of wanting and seeking focus and direction and linearity and order and organization, while the INFP is the person that comes from the perspective of trying to stay on the ball, to deal with what life has to throw at them, to stay open, to notice and be aware of the different people in, around you, the different values, the tribes, their expectations, my expectations, what I want, what they want, what they are doing, what I'm doing, you know to be aware of the different things that are happening around you, to be able to multitask, to be able to keep multiple balls in the air, to be able to deal with multiple projects and tasks and different things that you need to have and work through every day. The INFJ is the helper archetype, and archetypes are really helpful for understanding your personality. The archetypes give clear pictures, ideas in your head about every personality trait and cognitive function. The helper is the archetype of the feeling judging functions. The muse is the INFP's feeling perceiving function. The INFJ comes from the perspective of how can I help? What can I do? What can I make, do to make things better? What can I say to make other people feel better? How can I get other people through this? Is there anything I can do to make a difference? That person is having a bad day. Is there anything I can do to change this or work through this or help them? They come from the perspective of supporting, nurturing and giving. What can I give? How can I support another person? How can I help them? What can I say to them? What can I do for them? The INFP comes from the perspective of truth, honesty, authenticity, and self-expression. Who am I? What can I say or do to express my own feelings and who my own identity? How can I dress, act, and behave? How can I live and treat other people? What are my values? What is the right or wrong thing to do according to me? What do I feel is good or bad in society? As an individual, how do I think a person should live or behave or what they should do? So the INFP comes from the perspective of one's personal values and aesthetics and viewpoints. They come from also the muse's unique view and unique eyes. The muse is said to have unique eyes to be able to see the world differently than everyone else, to be able to look at an art piece and see gold where other people see trash, you know, to have your own unique viewpoint and to be able to have something that you feel is right personally, to have something that you value that other people may not care about or might not even notice is important. So often the muse comes from the perspective of truth and honesty and being honest with oneself and expressing oneself honestly. The INFJ comes from the perspective of the archetype of the entrepreneur, the visionary, the speculant, the gambler. The INFP comes from the perspective of the catalyst, the rebel, the change maker, the multitasker. The INFP is the person that is trying to spot options. What are the different things we could do in every situation? What are the different things a person might say to me next? What are the different things that we might all have to do in this point? If that happens, what will ha happen then? The INFP comes from the perspective of options and multitasking and change and of rebellion, of going against the flow. You know, everything seems to be going in this direction. Everybody seems so set on this one opinion. But there is another opinion out there. Have you guys seen this other opinion? Did you guys know we could also do this? Guys, it would be a lot faster if we did this. It would be a lot better for the animals if we lived like that. 
it would be a lot better for the poor if we did this instead. It would be better for the environment if we tried this out. So an INFP comes from the perspective of what we could do differently. So they are rebels. They go against the flow. They make their own uh, flow. They, uh, when everybody is going one that way, the INFP bounces off that and says, but what other ways could we go? So the INFJ then is the archetype of the entrepreneur. They speculate, they count, they make statistics, they project. If I go this way, I will end up there and then I will get to that point. And then I will have that problem that I have to deal with. And then I have to use that and that approach to get through it. They are archetypes of the visionaries. So they are trying to get and realize a vision in the world around them. They are trying to shape the world in accordance with their vision. They see we could all be going this way. And then they are set on that way. There is only that way. There is only that path. And so the INFJ is the archetype of the independent. You know, the person that doesn't care about or give a crap about what everyone else is doing because they have this one project that they can't stop thinking about. Actually, they tend to obsess about it. They think about it all the time. They think about it when they're at the bathroom. They think about it when they're at work. They think about it when they're at home. They think about it when they're out partying. <laughs> it's only that idea that they want to work through. That project and that often is an entrepreneurial project or a venture or business idea or some kind of uh, grand scheme or uh, gamble that they are making in the moment you know that they think will lead to gold or to fortune or to success or to the realization of their dreams. So also the INFJ is the lone visionary the person that has a vision that is kind of lonely in its nature it only has it comes from themselves from their own eyes from their own vision from their own image it's something they have seen for themselves in their own head that only they can do the INFP is the lone rebel they are the ones that go against the flow and nobody else seems to follow nobody else seems to know about this so they have to go on their own way and they end up alone because they are and go against society The INFJ is the quiet helper. The INFP is the quiet truth teller. The INFP comes from, sure, the perspective of what is my truth and what is my honesty, but they are not loud about this. They are not screaming and shouting for it, but they are quiet about it. They have their own values and they feel and they correct and they have these strong views, but often nobody knows about it and other people are surprised to find out about it. You can have an INFP in your nature or your environment for a long time and have no idea about how strongly they feel about certain things until you talk to them and start asking them questions and start finding out that, whoa, I didn't know you felt that way. I didn't know you thought like that. I didn't know you saw things like this. I didn't know you liked that. The INFJ is the quiet helper, so they are the people that help out but they never talk about it they never say it out loud they never say ask for a thanks they never uh, they often act in a discreet manner they support without saying anything they find something to do something small but they don't brag about it now I'm gonna talk about INFJ and INFP at their worst and how they are in stress because these are all positive archetypes that I walked through now. All of them are positive archetypes, just natural parts of the INFP and the INFJ at their best. You could also see the INFJ under extreme stress. And under extreme stress, the INFJ can be a little bit like the disadapter. <laughs> okay, I just made up that word. But they are kind of like the opposite of the adapter or the extroverted perceiving type under stress what you can see is either they become really restless and they become like that person that is trying to do everything in the moment right there in the moment uh, they're trying to get everything done in a minute but more likely they are the people that never do anything in the moment they design grand projects and grand ideas and 
grand ambitions, but in the moment they don't do anything at all. All of that pile of stuff that has to be done on a daily basis, it's not done. All the bills that you had to pay, all the things you had to do, all the people you had to message, all the pro actual work you had to get done, never happened. That's INFJ at the worst. That they fall through and they work on something long term and they miss everything that's happening around them. They have no idea of all these things, all those daily necessities that every person has to do. They are almost oblivious to, you know, all those things that come up on a daily basis. All those people around them that's, uh, are upset or angry or things that are going on, stress in work. They don't see it because they are only thinking about this, this thing in the future. INFP at their worst, well, that's the disorganizer type. Often, at their worst, you know, what you see is uh, the INFP has all these values and viewpoints and things they care about. But at their worst, they are archetypes that create chaos and create stress and create a lot of disorder around them because they are unable to keep things set uh, arranged smooth and ready they struggle to schedule things they struggle to be on time they struggle to uh, be at certain places when they need to be at a certain place they struggle to follow time protocols rules laws and all those things that we have all agreed on we all said in the tribe that we were supposed to do this and then the individual goes off and does something completely different. That's the disorganizer, the person that uh, constantly goes against everyone's wishes, that constantly ignores what everyone agreed upon, the person that uh, makes everything very chaotic because they don't say anything. You know, there's a big thing that we all need to be doing. There's a uh, timeline we need to follow. There's a deadline we need to meet. But the introverted perceiving type at their worst they're clueless about it. And okay, I can go on with this list, but I don't want to be mean. But it's just the truth. Uh, and you just gotta think about it and notice it in yourself and uh, do your best to stay clear of it and deal with it. The INFJ at their worst is also the fake sanguine, you know? The person that acts like everything is okay and everything is great even when it's not. They put on a fake smile, they say, oh, it's all good, you know, are you upset? No, it's great. It's, uh, how is it all going? Oh, it's going perfect. It's all going according to plan. <laughs> the INFJ can be tempted to maintain that IJ composure all the time, even when everything around them is falling apart, and even when they're missing all the events that are happening around them and they're unable to stay and deal with and take care of all the stressors that appear in their life. They appear like everything is great, like everything is good. And the same goes for the introverted perceiving type. The introverted perceiving type is the fake choleric. They put on this uh, face of being angry or upset or tense or like everything is wrong even when even when it's not, you know, they uh, put on this angry face, this uh, strong, intense vibe, even when everything is good or unnecessarily so. They push on and believe they have to act tough and act strong and act angry to get anything done and seem upset with everyone just to get things moving, even when they don't have to do this. They have just learned it as a survival strategy. So the INFP at their worst, they're also the procrastinators. And uh, there's a lot of videos out there on INFP procrastination. Just not doing anything, you know. Not working, not pushing yourself, not doing any work. Because you're so caught up with your feelings, you know. Uh, your feelings getting in the way of doing anything productive, you know, your feelings keeping you from actually doing anything, complaining about something but not ending up doing anything about it. Those are all downfalls of the INFP. A downfall of the INFJ is uh, a little like the archetype of the cheater, you know, the person that uh, 
uh, sheets to get ahead. You know, they're they're uh, maybe they're so focused on helping other people in their life that they're missing out on doing things in their own life. So what they start doing to stay ahead or to keep surviving or keep staying afloat is they sheet. They sheet on uh, bills and projects and they make things fast. They uh, do things in a sloppy manner just to get it done, you know, just to make it easy, as easy as possible for themselves. They they choose the easy way and often it never pays off and people notice all their glaring flaws and all the uh, issues and all the inefficiency and all the holes in their work and all the things they're doing poorly. It's just obvious to everyone around them and they can get seriously screwed over because of this. The INFJ at their worst, that's also the turtle archetype, you know, the person that takes forever to do anything, you know, we need to do this, okay. Yeah, nothing happens, it's like with some complaints around the INFJs and INTJs, it's that Nothing ever happens around them. You know, they say they're going to do so much, but nothing happens. And then they take forever to do it. And you're like, when are they going to start? Because often it's that they don't even start. It's that um, they take forever to start up on something. And once they're gone or going, it's good. But, you know, that they don't get started on anything. That they're not dealing with things while they're happening. They're not taking care of it. The INFP at their worst, that's... Uh, kind of like the lawbreaker you know uh, lack of discipline just an immense lack of discipline just uh, complete disorganization just the complete ability to stay on track and to stay accomplished in doing something and abil inability to set rules for yourself and to stick to those rules you know if you're not gonna eat that to not eat it and if you're gonna be there at a certain time to be there at a certain time uh, and to break the law and to go against it just for the hell of it, you know, because you can't comprehend it or can't deal with the law or can't deal with the rules or can't follow orders or can't maintain a discipline around yourself or a routine for, the mat for that matter at all. So yeah, these are all more unhealthy aspects of INFPs and INFJs. And... Uh, if these issues are big enough, you know, uh, something I want to say that's very important is there's a difference between having an, a personality type and having a cognitive disability. A complete inability to do something that's hinting towards a cognitive disability. If you cannot even bring yourself to do something simple, if you cannot even force yourself to show a little bit focus or organization, if it's very difficult for you to do anything at all or if that's if it's very hard for you for you to handle even the slightest stress on your inferior functions that suggests there is something bigger going on often in the normal person these are your small issues small flaws that you will see here and there especially in times of traumas and challenges and stress or bigger stress anyone can have these flaws but uh, there's a difference between having these flaws to a healthy extent and to having it to a very unhealthy extent. So let's end this video by talking about these types in growth. Because these two types can look at like each other's in growth. It's true. During times when INFPs feel especially encouraged to be this way and when they are especially confident in themselves, they might take on the qualities of the INFJ. In times of growth and vulnerability, the INFJ can steal themselves on being more honest with other people, on showing themselves to others, revealing themselves, making themselves vulnerable, uh, on developing their own personal sense of taste and judgment and being more open about what they feel and what they like and what they dislike. The INFP in growth will also be more open to help others, will care more about the tribe, will try to give more of themselves to others, will try to share and open up to others and to uh, help others and support others, feeling that they are able to deal with the stress source of other people's lives, you know, because a lot of the time INFPs feel 
while they want to and value to be giving and value having independence and working on their own projects, they feel they can't handle the stress of these things, the demands, the social demands, the social expectations of having to deal with other people, of having to help other people, of having to sit down for a long time and focus. The INFP feels to some extent they can't handle these things, but at their best, when encouraged positively, rewarded for it, the INFP can do these things. If the INFP is in a state of inspiration or growth, what you will see is they start tapping more on the INFJ's functions and also, or more rather, the ENFJ's functions. They also become more open with their feelings and they also become more open to opportunity around them. They start trying to express and invest themselves in other people. They pour their energy into others and helping and supporting others, not just themselves, but also other people. They also sit down, they write, they write something from start to finish, they finish a project, uh, they can work consistently on something for a longer time, you know. But what often happens is there is a degree of doubt as you proceed along this road, there's a degree of doubt. There is maybe this one vision is not going to lead anywhere, maybe I should guard myself by keeping my options open, you know. Maybe I should keep my options open. Maybe I should try that out instead. Or as soon as it starts to fade out or it starts to give you less response or the idea seems to be going nowhere. A tendency to become insecure and go, it's not going to work. Oh, it's not going to work at all. Oh, I better do something else with my life. Oh, I'm helping other people, but really they're, they don't care about it. They don't like me. They, they're screwing me over. They're using me for my energy. So I'm not going to do it anymore. That's the INFP then, when the stress becomes too big or the reward is too small. The same goes for the INFJ, you know. It comes to opening up and expressing yourself and other people thinking you're weird for doing so or sharing your opinions and other people thinking you're an idiot for thinking that way or for having these views or caring about these things, you know. It's uh, opening up what, what you like and dislike and hearing other people shut you down and tell you you should not feel that way or should not think that way. It's also opening up to other options and becoming a little less linear, a little less narrow in your scope and starting to entertain options that you previously missed. It's realizing that, oh yeah, there's other ways to do things. There's not just my way. There's other ways to do things. Maybe I could incorporate them or synthesize them or bring them in my vision and use them positively, proactively to make the world a better place. But that's only at their best. Often there can be um, an anxiety or a stress as you do these things, as you start opening up to other options, that fear of chaos getting a hold of you or, oh no, no, uh, it's st I'm starting to lose track, I don't know what anything means anymore and, oh, there's too many options, I can't keep my focus anymore and uh, these options, what if they're all fruitless, uh, what if I'm distracting myself, and what if I'm missing out on this bigger idea that I have. So to wrap up this video, INFPs are great, INFJs are awesome. Both of these types have their strengths and differences. The biggest difference is in their strengths. Uh, you know, INFPs tend to be good at one thing, INFJs tend to be good at another. Another key difference is in their temperament and their approach to life and their emotions and how they manage their emotions. The main difference has to do with their dealings of stress, how they resolve and manage stress in their personal lives. Perceiving versus judging. Which one fits you better? Are you an INFJ or an INFP? Share in the comments down below. Let me know if this video helped you. And thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.